the Creality Halot Mage Pro. Let's give it a review. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, it's been a while since I reviewed a Creality printer. The last time was the Halot One Plus, a very attractive and capable printer, though I did have a few grumbles. This time it's the Halot Mage Pro, an 8K mid-range printer, which again is a fairly attractive and impressively capable machine. And unfortunately, I'm going to have many of the same grumbles, as we'll see. The first thing I noticed whilst unwrapping was these fans and heat sinks on the bottom of the printer. Being exposed like this, it makes it easy to replace them if necessary. It also means the fans are very noisy, without doubt in fact, the noisiest fans I've personally come across. Oh, and these feet are not adjustable, which is a real shame, as that would have come in handy. The lid is a clever integral flip-top design, which rotates 180 degrees to provide excellent access within. The build plate is large to cope with the mid-range printing capacity, and the surfacing on this grips like crazy, so you'll likely destroy rafts and supports just trying to free print from it. The resin tray is large and metal, with embossed level indicators. It has the semi-opaque ACF quick release liner we're seeing crop up everywhere at the moment. It even has fixing bolts permanently secured to it, which is very convenient. It's just a shame that paint job wasn't more thorough. Fixing the plate to the Xeon is a little different, but I have to say, it works well. The Z support is nice and sturdy with dual linear rails. The power point and switch are located at the rear of the printer. And as you can see, there's also an ethernet port. It also has built-in Wi-Fi, giving the Creality internet connectivity. You can also see this flexible black tube, which belongs to this resin pump a device intended for convenient resin removal and top-up. Unfortunately, I have to say, I'm not a fan. This spout is made of a hard plastic. It pivots to allow the vat to be fitted and removed, but it actually makes fitting the vat surprisingly cumbersome. There's no legs or locating points on the tray, and it needs to be pushed in quite forcibly to allow the bolts to find home. It's definitely a two-handed job, and you'll have many a frustrating moment trying to position everything just right. As the spout is immersed in resin, it drips if the vat is removed, so you'll be forever cleaning the screen. The spout itself is impossible to clean, so some level of cross-contamination will always occur, which is very risky with some speciality resins. Personally, I use castable resins for metalwork, and if these get contaminated, you can say goodbye to a good quality metal finish. I've even heard stories of these plastic spouts breaking off, as I understand happened to our buddy over at Fohammer. But if you could live with the awkward fitting, annoying dripping, stubborn cleaning, and potentially fragile aspects of this, at least it drains away the resin with ease, right? No, this feature is as useful to me as a bicycle is to a fish. It takes an absolute age to empty the resin tank, and I even had to tilt the printer. Yes, emptying the tray manually is messy, but there's still resin in the pump and pipework that needs cleaning out, along with the tray itself. So for me, there's absolutely no time savings here. As a top-up tool, it may have some merit, but topping up resin is hardly a difficult job. There's also this carbon air filter, which is a nice touch. And no, it's not supposed to wobble like that. It has just one small fixing screw at the top, but luckily a simple push will reseat it properly until the next time it vibrates free. 
Creality provide this ridiculously short hose to attach to the filter. It does stretch, but not enough to make this hose anything other than a sales gimmick come a red herring. There's two USB ports at the front, allowing you not only to add files, but also plug in a camera if you have one. I don't, but it's nice to know these features are well supported within the user interface. Talking of which, for me, this dancing character never grows old, which says more about me than I'd care to admit. But that's where my enjoyment ends. The Mage Pro has the same Creality operating system that we saw on the Plus One, where I said, the moment you turn it on, it seems to try and force you to connect with their cloud. And this is nice if you want this feature, but if plug and print is more your thing, it takes a bit of ducking and diving to get past this. Eventually, it does seem to learn that you're not interested, but initially connectivity seems less of an option and more of a demand. Once the user interface decides to play nicely, you'll then probably find it's too involved. I mean, watch this. Print, select my file from the USB. It's importing it to memory at the moment, which is nice as I can pull out the USB stick if I want to. Now I've got to select my file for a second time. File parameters, I've got a choice here whether to manually change the file parameters on the printer itself, which I acknowledge is a very nice feature, though not that uncommon in fairness, or whether to stick with those already included within the sliced file. I'll choose File. And finally, I get to click Start. After a while, this becomes fairly normal, but it is a bit involved, don't you think? Now here, for Creality's benefit, is how any Cubic UI typically does it, and printing with Eligu is much the same. Print, select the file, go. This seems much simpler to me, and when it comes to user operation, surely simple is best. And if you think I'm being a bit silly here, I promise you, after a couple of days of playing with this printer, other than through plate leveling, I haven't been able to find out how to raise or lower the plate. It's probably there, but it's just not obviously there. I will add that the lack of a typical Z movement option is frustrating enough, but couple this with the alarming speed of the plate, it's absolutely brown trousers time each time you hit this button and home the plate at the top of the arm. The Halo Mage Pro has an 8K monochrome screen, helping it produce roughly 30 microns of XY resolution. To test the printing capabilities, I grabbed a bottle of Anycubic Water Wash Grey, which has given me excellent results in the past, and I dialed it in using Ligi. In terms of slices, the Mage Pro is highly accessible, and with this printer, I've personally used Ligi Chitu Box and even Halo Box, all with equal success. The Amenolabs Town test print came out great, but I did notice something. These vertical lines. Now these are very subtle and I can't see them without a high powered macro lens, but I have seen them before. When I reviewed the Anycubic M5S and the Elegoo Saturn 3 Ultra, both 12K printers, I saw similar lines there. At the time, I questioned whether this was a 12K rectangular pixel issue, but as I'm seeing similar lines on this 8K Mage Pro, the common denominator here seems to be this ACF liner, this semi-opaque FEP equivalent that's meant to improve printing times. I could of course be wrong, but it is an interesting coincidence. Fortunately, in real life terms, it doesn't spoil the prints. These little orcs are my own design. I'm just having a bit of fun giving them interchangeable heads, bodies and weapons. Creality boasts that this printer can achieve speeds of 170mm per hour 
and I may as well come clean and say right now that I haven't managed to achieve anything like that. Creality did kindly provide me with a bottle of their fast resin. This has very low viscosity, something like the consistency of milk. I found it easy and pleasant to work with, though regular stirring is a must, as within just one hour, I found it starts to separate. There's something called a Dynax mode found within the UI of this printer. This must be selected and turned on for fast printing, which is a little annoying as it's an extra step to remember. Sure, you'll need to make sure that you use the correct settings for the fast resin, but without Dynax turned on, you won't get faster prints. I used the provided pre-sliced Dynax files with the fast resin and never saw anything that impressed me in terms of speed. Actually, the prints were horribly supported, making clipping a nightmare, so neither print came out great. Frustrated, I requested instructions from Creality and used the fast printing settings they recommended. You'll note that the layer height has risen from the standard 0.05 height to 0.2, which is four times thicker, vastly reducing print quality. I quickly designed an accurate measure using Fusion 360 and printed this along with Mini Vogman. And still, I only attained a speed of approximately 100 millimeters per hour. Nothing like the prophesized 170. All in all, it was disappointing. So what do I think of the Creality Halot Mage Pro? At approximately $600, it's not cheap. There's a lot of 12K printers out there right now for less than this. And there's more 8Ks than I can shake a stick at. This begs the question, why so much? What do Creality think they're offering us that's worth this extra money? Well, it does have both Wi-Fi and Ethernet, which gives us access to the Creality Cloud for file monitoring, etc. Which, I admit, are points I've not covered in this video. But I did touch on them when I reviewed the Halot One Plus. This connectivity is no doubt useful to some, but on its own, it doesn't justify the expense. So I can only assume Creality feels that the world's slowest resin pump and their rickety air filter make up for the rest of the expense. Okay, yes, I admit I'm being a little unkind there. Both are good features and both work. But for the extra expense, I would have liked to have seen them both work that much better. Frankly, the ventilation system can be surpassed tenfold just by opening a window. And I think I can empty and clean half a dozen resin trays in the time it takes the resin pump to empty just one. The fast printing is also bogus, but Creality aren't alone here. We're seeing speed claims from most companies right now, and in all cases, it seems to be the same story. A new thin resin and jacked up layer heights, giving us FDM quality prints. There's no doubt that fast printing has its place for smooth-sided prototypes and the like, but personally I got into resin printing because I love the quality and the fine finish that's achievable. I'm hating seeing this being thrown away in search of speed. If I can't have quality, why bother with resin printing? And all this worries me because I feel Creality have let themselves down here. They've jumped on the fast print bandwagon to keep up with their competitors, which is understandable. But they've let themselves down by adding unnecessary features. Creality, if you want to give us something useful, scrap this resin pump and give us an enclosure heater as standard. That's a useful feature. And this is a real shame because this is a good 8K printer. It even makes my designs look good, so it must be doing something right. Creality has their fan base, so I've no doubt this printer will sell, even though this fan enthusiasm 
doesn't seem to be reflected in the real user data that we've collected between us. So, would I buy this printer? I'm sorry to say, no, I wouldn't. Strip out the disastrous resin pump for a heater, and I'd be much more inclined. But for what it is, a good 8K printer, it's overpriced and underwhelming. Should you buy this printer? Well, that's the beauty of choice. It would be a boring world if we were all the same. So it's completely up to you. And that's the end of another review where I alienate myself from printing companies and get blacklisted from review lists. But I have to tell the truth. It's what I do. So that's it for this review, guys. Take care and thanks for watching.